You know how it is. Your local petrol station charges whatever it charges for its petrol, but then you read about a petrol station in the next town over that seems to be selling petrol for really cheap. And that makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is it worth driving further to save money on petrol? Now, some of you are going to be already jumping into the comments to say, no, absolutely not. It's absurd. You have to drive further, therefore you use more fuel, thus there's no saving to be made. And that's fair. I thought similar, but then I started to crunch the numbers. A lot of numbers. And it seems, under the right circumstances, it can be done. You can drive further and save money on petrol. And I'm going to tell you how. Grab yourself a pen and paper, because today we're going to be doing some maths. First things first, there are variables. There are many, many variables. The ones that matter most to us are, of course, the price of fuel, how fuel efficient your car is, which today we'll be measuring in MPG. And the surprising variable that I hadn't thought of is the size of your fuel tank. That last one's actually going to turn out to be quite important, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's start with price. For the purpose of this video, we need to generalize a bit. I'm going to use Shell petrol stations in our example, and the prices are what they were at the time of filming. Let's say you live in the small village of Morton in Marsh. Your nearest petrol station is a 10 mile round trip and they're charging 1.529 pounds per litre. Yet just down the road is another filling station that's selling petrol for 1.489 a litre. The downside is that it's going to be twice the distance involving a 20 mile round trip. Further away in Banbury, we find a filling station that's selling petrol for 1.389 pounds a litre. An absolute bargain. The downside though is the distance. That's a 40 mile round trip, twice what we had before. So let's review our options for the residents in Morton and Marsh. Option one is to do a 10 mile round trip and pay 1.529 pounds a litre. Option two is to do a 20 mile round trip and pay 1.489 pounds a litre. Or option three is to do a 40 mile round trip and pay 1.389 pounds a litre. There's the potential of a 14 pence per litre saving, but at the cost of a 40 mile round trip. Is it worth it? That's what we want to know. The answer is that it might be. Keep watching. MPG or miles per gallon, another variable, and of course, this is rather critical to our mission. I've got you covered though. I've run the figures for cars that average 15 miles per gallon up to 50 miles per gallon, going up in increments of five. For my overseas viewers, especially those in the US, I'm using UK gallons for my conversions, just in case you wanted to run the figures for yourself. Fuel tank size. It turns out this is quite important because we can't actually calculate half of what we need to without it. For today's example, I've gone with a 45 litre tank as this represents the sort of fuel tank size you'll get on your kind of average hatchback like a Fiesta. So what do we need to work out to work out what we need to work out? Well, we need to know how much of a saving can be made at each of the filling stations. And of course, that's a fairly simple case of multiply the amount of litres by the price per litre. So our hatchback will cost this much to fill up at our local filling station in Morton in Marsh. If we drive a little bit further and do a 20 mile round trip, it's going to cost this much. And then if we drive over to Banbury with our 40 mile round trip, it's going to cost this much. And straight away, we can see that a saving of £1.80 or £6.30 can be made just by driving a bit further. But then, of course, how much is it going to cost you to get to these other petrol stations and back? That's the catch. To know that, we need to work out how much it costs to drive a mile in our hatchback. This is where the MPG comes into play, and it's also where things might start to get a little bit messy. Let's take a look at our hatchback. At the lower end of the MPG scale, at 15 miles per gallon, we've retrofitted an LS1 V8 engine. And then at the upper end of 50 miles per gallon, we've stuck with a 0.9 litre Eco shitbox engine. I've also included some in-between models to give us a wider range of MPG figures to work with. Now we already know that the car has got a 45 litre tank, so using the average MPG figure of our choice, we can calculate the theoretical range of this car. So these are the theoretical ranges for the car based on the MPG average of your choice. For today's demonstration, we're assuming that you're currently filling up at your local and more expensive filling station, and in this case it costs £68.81 to fill up our 45 litre car. If we simply divide the money by the range, we get how much it costs for each mile covered. With that in mind, we can finally work out how much it's going to cost us to travel to each of our petrol stations. And if any of these figures are higher than our saving that we established earlier, it's a fail. You said you can drive further and save money. Our survey said... <coughs> oh dear, it appears I've wasted your time and mine, because it looks like we're losing money in all situations, except for two. If you drive a car that can do 45 or 50 miles per gallon, we stand to save 18 or 80 pence respectively if we drive to the furthest away petrol station. That's shit then, isn't it? All that to save a maximum of 80 pence. But wait, before you close the video and write it off completely, I thought there must be a way to prove my point somehow, and I've only gone and worked it out, haven't I? Remember earlier when I said fuel tank size was a surprising variable? Indeed, I've been messing around with the figures and I've adjusted the fuel tank size to reflect that of a larger car, and this seems to change things. Meaning that yes, it is worth driving further for cheaper petrol, in some small and very specific cases. If we apply all of what I've said to a car that's got an 81 litre tank, 
We can drive to the furthest yet cheapest filling station and save anywhere from 33 pence up to 5 pounds 84 pence, depending on the MPG our car returns. So I've cracked it. What you need is a car that's got at least an 81 litre tank and the ability to do 50 miles per gallon or more. Once you've spent over £60,000 on that, you'll be able to save at least £5.84 by travelling further to the cheaper filling station. To conclude, it seems that in order to win this game, you need to travel further and put more fuel in. And if you do that, you'll save money. Which sounds like absolute bollocks, doesn't it? Thanks for watching.